It's official, Volvo no longer make cars. That's right, in the UK, they only make SUVs. It's a very sad day indeed for dads all around the UK. But today, I'm driving a classic Volvo Estate and I think this car might prove that sporty looks and blistering performance isn't the only route to have a cool dad car. Should we find out what I'm going on about? My name's Ben and welcome to Dad Cars. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today you join me in what has always been to me a quintessential granddad car. This magnificent vessel is a 1991 Volvo 960 Estate. It's got a 2.9 litre inline six which produces around 204 horsepower and it's mated to a four-speed automatic. Now they did do manuals but apparently they're fairly rare. So you, I mean you don't see these cars full stop much on the road anymore but finding a manual is a very tricky thing indeed. Now there were some other engine options as well, some smaller engines which were turbocharged and even a diesel I think. Oh ambulance, let's let that go. And while we're going uphill here, let's have a little feel of what this engine's like. Oh, drop down there. Oh, it does get a shift on. <laughs> and back in 1991, I mean, this was a top spec car. You got lecky windows, sunroof, air conditioning, electrically adjustable driver's seat, heated seats. And just look at this lovely <laughs> lever. I love the contrasting color of this lever. It's wonderful and it smells like, like a proper Volvo as well it smells like spending quality time with your granddad has anybody watching this got any memories of sitting in the back of a Volvo from this generation there must be some people out there let us know in the comments below so back in 1991 this car was really ahead of its time and obviously being a Volvo for decades now Volvo have been pioneers in car safety and this car comes with loads of really cool features Mechanical seatbelt tensioners, ABS, collapsible steering column, side impact protection, a centre brake light and more. In 1991, this was pioneering safety. So what do we think of the looks of this thing? Obviously it is, like I said, a proper granddad car, isn't it? But I think today it's never looked cooler because obviously every other car on the road is an SUV. It's a point I often make on this channel, but it's true and with Volvo no longer making their estates. I mean, I just think that this is such a cool thing. Right, let's see how it feels going around this roundabout. <laughs> you know what? It's not got nearly as much body roll as I thought it was going to have. And the ride quality, honestly, is genuinely impressive. I went over a particularly bumpy section of road earlier on, which Normally with SUVs, honestly, it, it, you're wobbling all over the place, but this kind of, I felt like you were sailing over the top of it. I'm really rather enjoying this. Now this steering wheel is lovely. It's a perfect thickness for me. I like a thinner wheel. So back in 1991, if you were an absolute baller of a dad, you wanted something really safe, practical, technically advanced, you know, you would buy yourself one of these 960s. But what's the modern equivalent then? So yeah, Volvo don't do estates in the UK anymore. So what's the, the biggest SUV they do is an XC90, which is basically two meters wide and five meters long. So significantly bigger than this car. It's also about 50% heavier. I think these were like 15, 1600 kilograms, whereas the XC90 is closer to like 2.3 tons, I think. But obviously with all of that extra size in the XC90, it's probably got a bigger boot, more practical than this. Well, no, <laughs> no, it hasn't. It's actually got a smaller boot than this car. The XC90's boot capacity is like 960 something litres, whereas this is 990 litres. Now that's progress for you, isn't it? But I mean, compare this to the average family car that everybody thinks they need to do. They think as soon as the children are coming along, go out and get yourself a, a Nissan Qashqai. And the boot capacity in Nissan Qashqai is half the size of this boot. And come on, today, this looks so much cooler on the road than an SUV. I mean, I love the Volvo Estates where the rear side window, the one in line with the boot, is the biggest window. 
<laughs> and there's loads of cool details on this car, like the lights at the front have got little windscreen wipers. So how cool is that? And the roof rails as well. Oh, this is such a cool looking dad car, isn't it? Right, look, let's test the um, acceleration here. So I'll overtake this car. It makes a nice sound as well. It's a good looking engine, this as well. It's a lovely looking inline six. But what about the running costs? That's not gonna be as cheap as a Nissan Qashqai, is it? And no, to be fair, it's probably gonna cost more. So, you know, being a, a modern classic, you know, any car that's 30 plus years old, you know, you kind of hit in that stage where you will be wrestling with rust on the wheel arches with these cars, I'm sure. And also I'm sure that many of the 30 year old components will start to need to be replaced. Now I asked this car's owner, James, what's the biggest bill you've had? And he said he had a water pump failure, which cost 650 pounds. And apparently that's fairly common on these cars. And what about miles per gallon? Well, I reckon on average, you're gonna be getting around 25 miles per gallon out of one of these. On a run, you'll get closer to 30, which, you know what, it's not really that bad, is it? However, you will need to use E5 fuel, which obviously is a bit more expensive. But I think road tax is about 325 pounds, but how much would it cost you to buy one of these cars? Well, I think if you're handy with the spanners, and you've got a bit of spare time at weekends, you can do a little bit of restoration and work yourself. You probably be able to buy a car which needs some TLC for around a thousand pounds. You know, I, I saw one on Auto Trader this morning for like 960 pounds. Admittedly, that was quite a high mile car. This one that I'm driving here today sits on only 130,000, which is really good. And you can tell in here actually because it's a, a lovely conditioned car. But what if you're like me and mechanically incapable? Well, I reckon for three to four thousand pounds, you'd be able to get yourself a really nice example of one of these. It's just a case of good luck trying to find one because I don't think there's that many on the road. In fact, I think James told me earlier on that he thinks there's about 600 of them left on UK roads. Oh, nice Merc estate there. Do need to get some more estates on the channel. If anyone's watching this and they've got some cool estates, some cool wagons, particularly if you've got some fast ones, I'd love to hear from you. Right, coming up to national speed limit here. We're just in normal auto mode and 30 miles an hour. Let's plant our foot down. So it takes a little while to get going, but you can feel that it's got good power, good torque there. Although funny enough, I think people say that these aren't very good at towing, although it's got a tow bar on the back. But the performance is genuinely shocking. I was expecting this to feel very slow indeed, but it doesn't. This is a, an excellent tourer, I would say. And Christ, back in 1991, and this thing must have felt like a rocket. Look, here we go, another roundabout. Let's carry a bit of speed into it. Yeah. <laughs> it corners surprisingly well. It really does. But it does just feel like you're just sailing over the top of everything. <laughs> but it's one of those lovely, comfortable cruisers that once you are moving at pace, it's all about just sailing. You know, carrying that pace, using the brake as little as possible, and you do feel like the captain of a rather luxurious ship. Now, I talked a little bit earlier on about safety in this car, and although it has got some really impressive features, I mean, it's from a time that predates NCAP test. You know, NCAP started coming in really around the late 90s. But like I said, Volvo really did pioneer the whole car safety and, and using that as a selling point for cars. I mean, nowadays, a good NCAP test is essential if you're gonna sell a car en masse. Now, back in the day, Volvo were proudly using systems like the, the side impact protection system you know, using that as, as advertisement to try and sell these cars. You know, they really did pioneer it, which is why it's just so frustrating to me that now they only make SUVs because, you know, big, heavy, over two ton SUVs with a higher center of gravity, where the number plate is like at my headline, if that goes into the side of me, that's, that's not as safe for all other road users, is it? And obviously when you're considering driving a car from the early 90s today with your children on board of all these two and a half ton SUVs and EVs flying around, you know, it, look, it, it is a concern, isn't it? And long-term subscribers of the channel have no doubt noticed that I don't have any of my children in the back of this car. Normally I do in my reviews, but 
The reason for that is I've very recently met up with a child seat expert who specializes in Swedish child seats. And I saw some belt secured child seats, which tested as good as Isofix child seats. And in some tests actually scored better than Isofix child seats. So I'll be making a video with that child seat expert on the Dadcast channel, which if that sounds interesting to you, if you like driving older cars which don't have Isofix, subscribe to the channel because it's going to be fascinating. And I'm going to get my hands on some of these incredible child seats so that I can continue to use them in modern classics in these videos with my children in the back. So I need to say a massive thank you to this car's owner, James. I met James when I was marshalling at Auto Alex's Matwood event. I was on the gate and when I saw this thing roll up, obviously these, are, these are just never appealed to me personally. This is not the sort of dad car that I would normally go for, but it made me smile. Just thought it was so cool. And then we got talking via email, he offered me to feature the car. And then obviously with the recent news about Volvo scrapping estates, I absolutely had to get it on. And James purchased this car because he is a dad and you know he wanted something which had some character, had some charm, but you know still some safety. And he already has one of these child seats that I'm talking about. I can't wait to show them to you. So in summary then for the Volvo 960 Estate, would I own one of these as a dad car? Well, look, subscribers to the channel will know that dad cars that I like are really sporty, you know, really high performance cars. So. I can't see me having one of these, but what this has opened my eyes to is a couple of things. One, there is genuine magic to be found at any budget. You know, you pick up one of these couple of grand, you know, work on it yourself, and you've got yourself a really exciting dad car that makes people smile. You know, people just do not see cars like this anymore on the road. Two, when I replaced my wife's X5, I was looking at getting another SUV, but maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should buy an estate. You know, they've proven that they can be more practical probably be cheaper to run as well and they'll be cheaper to buy and I am so disappointed in Volvo going SUV only because it's a complete contradiction to me to what Volvo represent what their core ethos is and and why I've always liked Volvo you know they've been pioneers in practicality and pioneers in safety and the fact of the matter is that SUVs are bigger and heavier which means that other road users are more vulnerable it's not very safe and they are less practical than, you know, estates like this. So it's massively disappointing. But to the family icon that is the Volvo estate, I salute you. And if like me, you would like to see an end to the current crossover SUV obsession, like, comment and share this video. And check out this video where I prove that large SUVs are not the best thing for families. I'll see you on the next one.